scratch and include every single detail of making that power module PCB. Hopefully that will be helpful for not only group two, but also group one. Uh, hopefully I can get it done on Saturday morning so you can watch it and um, finish everything by Monday. So my plan is on Monday, I will probably just go to the website and uh, click your links uh, and uh, share with everyone in the class about uh, any single issues in everyone's PCB. If you don't want me to do that, you just send me an email, then we'll skip your tutorial, your report. Because if I if I don't, you know, because all the reports are online, anybody can, can click it. So, but I think if I have all the issues from every single design, uh, the pros and cons, whatever, to show it to everyone and have some comments for every single design, I think it's good for everyone. You'll see what other people have doing, which is great. But what they did, what they did, and what is not that great, but what they have done. Okay. Again, if you don't want me to do that for your tutorial, send me an email. Then I'm gonna skip your PCB. Okay. Um. So today. I used uh, to, for example, in, in my 315 junior design class, I will provide pretty much 80% of the, the sketch and block 20% of the sketch and let the students to fill in the code right, and complete the project. But I have changed my strategy for this class, especially for group two, based on your experiences that since you are in group two, so I assume you already have some kind of um, Arduino programming experience. So I won't cover whatever has, has been covered in group one's tutorial. Um, so I will directly get into the topic. And I will let you know the purpose of this project. Okay, first, be clear. It's 80% ed educational and 20% commercial. Um, I do need your help. If you do not finish the final project, the final step, it's fine. I think you are receiving, see the final step is 20 points. You are receiving 80 points for this uh, single project. I think if you do a little bit here, probably I will give you a partial credit, like 10 points out of it, if you didn't finish everything. But if you follow everything, since I already provided the code, <laughs> if you know how to wear everything up, if you know how to upload the code to the Arduino, you can get 80 points. <laughs> Is that easy credit? You know, the purpose of that is not to give you easy credits, is to get you guys ready for these 20 points. That's what I care about. I have a similar system that I sold to a, you know, these guys know, I sold to a, a, a Pagosa Spring Resort, and I don't think that's perfect because I am not allowing the user to change the Wi Fi credentials. So I think it's better to add that function to the module. The reason I didn't add that function to that to that module is because they didn't pay me too much money to so I don't want to do that. It takes time. Uh, so as long as it works, I will just send the box to them. So it's being done. So the project is pretty much done. Um, but I think if I if my students can can get this this thing polished or completed. I'm not going to get money from this, but I will probably let them know, hey, this is what our students have done. Uh, you can use this design to do an update, upgrade to your system if you like. If you don't like whatever I have gave to you, is it's gonna work, which is fine. Um, so I'm not getting money from this, okay? So keep in mind, you are paying credits, you are paying tuition, and I let you to do something, I'm getting money from that. 
That's crazy. That's evil. I don't know. I'm not doing that. Right? <laughs> so this is, this is just a, a project for you to learn. Uh, the code, like I said, has been uh, provided. So let me start from the very beginning and take a look what's going to happen here. This may take longer than I expect. Okay, probably not two weeks, three to four weeks, I guess. Okay. Arduino Nano, it has a 328p microcontroller. It looks different than the deep version. But what's the difference? What's the difference? It's the same die. If you were in Engineering 337, you know what's a die. It's a silicon, silicon die. Let me show you. Probably I have a picture on my website in the past a couple of years ago. Yeah, like this. So that's a, a integrated circuit chip we fabricated a couple of years ago. And you can see that here's a package. That's a package of the chip. Uh, the package looks huge because it's not, a, uh, it's not for, for money, it's for educational purpose. We fabricated it from Moses, which is a third party company collecting all these IC designs and uh, send it to the manufacturer for, for uh, making all these chips together. Uh, we received a grant to support this kind of fabrication for our students a couple of years ago for free. So the students in my analog class, they were able to send a design, IC design to the company and receive this little die for their design. It's just 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter of the design. And it's being uh, put in the middle of the package and all these bonding wires you couldn't see since they are super thin. So the bonding wires are being soldered to these pads and then being connected to the pins. So, so it looks like the chip is large, but actually the, the integrated circuit is tiny. It's just on this 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter silicon die. So if you look at this guy, you understand what's going on. What's the difference between this guy and this one? This the deep version. That's a Atomega 320A chip as well. So what's the difference? So here's an Arduino Nano. Here's the Arduino Uno. I know it looks different, a lot different. But here is the 328 chip. This is also a 328 chip. So what's the difference? The package. So did you see the package I just showed you on my website? That's a free package, ugly. So if you want to sell it, you have to at least make it look like this, right? At least a, a deep version looks decent. If you want to make a surface mount, you, want, you can make this use this package. However, what part of the chip is the same in between these two different designs? The internal what? Yep, and the internal die. What is a die? The little 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter silicon die. They just have the same die put in the package and use a different package. Right, that's it. So they have the same chip, same pin, uh, same number of pins, and same pretty much everything uh, other than the, uh, the package. Okay, that's the only difference. So you can, you can use the same code as what, uh, what, we, what you used here and upload to this microcontroller and do the same job. Okay. <clears throat> 
here, that's a crystal oscillator. So it's going to provide the clock to the chip. In the Micron, in the Arduino Uno, what we have been using, if you look at uh, here, so where's the crystal? Let me know. Where's the oscillator? So that's a crystal, right? Is it a deep or a surface mount? Deep or surface mount? The oscillator. Hmm? Through hole. Through hole. Yes, you're right. So let's take a look. See? Is that clear? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's a through hole. It's a deep version. So I insert it to the holes and solder on the back and cut the wire. Okay, that's what I did. No, I didn't do that, but that's what they did. <laughs> Sorry. So that's the oscillator, and it doesn't have a 20 picofarad capacitor with it. So whenever you are using the oscillator, you have to use two 20 picofarad capacitor with it. So they are here, I guess, surface mount capacitors. So that's how you can provide the oscillation or clock for the microcontroller. If you were in my logic, you know what is clock. Do you remember the sequential logic, the uh, flip-flops, JK, right, clock? So it provides all these, these uh, digital oscillations for the fan controller. So this is how you um, connect the clock to this micro, micro uh, controller. What about here? Where is the oscillator? Where is the oscillator? This one? Nearby? Yep. So what is this? What is this? Yeah, that's a reset button. That's a push button. So that guy, this little thing here, is the oscillator. And where's the capacitor? Where's the capacitor? Whoop. No, here. What is this? What is this guy? <laughs> Come on. You hate it, right? What is this one? Yeah, the three point seven, three point three volts. No, five volts regulator. Why five volts? Why not three point three volts? Five volts logic and Arduino the. Uh, at a Mega 320A P chip, which is this my controller, is a five volts, uh, need a five volts to provide the logic level. So it's a five volts regulator, which means, is that five volts? Yeah, it's five volts. Okay, so that's the power module. What is this guy? So that's a USB to serial converter. So when you are uploading your code through USB, it is able to convert into a serial, which is RXTX protocol for your microcontroller to upload the code to it. So the rest of them are either capacitors, resistors, or um, dials, things like that. So this, Serial uh, USB to serial converter has the oscillator uh, with it. It's probably it needs a special uh, specific oscillator to run. So here, this guy is the oscillator for the microcontroller, and the capacitors are built in in the oscillator. Is that amazing? See this surface mount oscillator compared to this huge one, they can do the same job. And also this one doesn't have a so the huge one doesn't have a uh, the two 20 picofarad capacitors with it, but this guy already has the two capacitors built inside. So it just need one single chip to do the 
crystal to include the crystal oscillator and the two capacitors inside to save space on the board. Is that clear? So if you are doing a bare bone my controller on your customized PCB, you just need to get one of these surface mount 320A mega, a 320AP my controller and a little thing like this and part it up, start running. Is that crazy? So you can save a lot of space. If you do not use this one, but use this guy, you have to put this one on the board and include this one and then two capacitors. Okay, so this is for high school level. This is for kind of professional level, I think. Not super professional, but I think it's way better than this. So that's why for the second design for the resort, I'm trying to use this one, surface mount. Okay, uh, got a surface mount a controller. I I have bought a lot in the summer, probably a hundred or something in my drawer. And I'm gonna order more of these oscillators for you. If you can get it done, I will fabricate a PCB for you and let you solder all these surface mount to the PCB and demonstrate the functionality of your system. Okay, so this may take may take more than two weeks, like I said, right? So including the testing, PCB drawing, and fabrication, and soldering, and testing. Maybe I'm thinking about probably four weeks, okay? Is that a decent project? So every single project you are doing here in this class is prob probably in the same skill as any senior seminar people have done in this department. Do you know before I came over, they have been struggling, even they don't ha they haven't even fabricated any decent PCBs. So that's what I learned. That's why I think you guys need to uh, design and fabricate not just one PCB, but multiple. So whenever you are doing a senior sum design, they will say, I, I do need this student to help my group <laughs> to design a PCB for us. So they will fight for C students for their seniors and groups. I need two C, no, I need one, I need three, like that. Um, okay, another thing I wanna let you know, uh, this is a application-oriented class. So instead of introducing all the pins, since the Mac controller has 28 pins, so instead of introducing the functions of every pin using slides, this is what I experienced in college. I think it's better to directly get into the application and give you the code and have an open topic to let you design your own stuff. And at the same time, when you are working with a microcontroller, you probably will have to go back to the data sheet to look at the function of the specific pins. So that's a better way to learn instead of not telling you what's what that pin is gonna do, but just telling you what that pin can do in slides. And you'll feel sleep. Right? You'll sleep during the class and you can't you couldn't learn anything. So that's what I what I'm trying to do. So if you look at this pin out of the uh Arduino nano chip, what is this? That's a digital pin, number 13. What is SAK? That's a clock for SPI. It's a standard name. Everywhere you see my controller, you will see SAK. It's gonna be the clock line for the SPI communication protocol. You don't know what is what is SPI, which is fine since we have libraries to let you guys just directly do digital write and reading. Um, so regarding like uh, for the timing diagram of the communication protocol, at which time frame do what kind of task? This will be covered in embedded devices in spring, but not here. If we only try to let you guys design the SPI port using software instead of hardware directly using their library, it takes an entire semester to learn one single communication protocol. 
is not easy. However, the good thing is there are not too many different types of communication protocols available on a single chip. So the most common ones, you just need to know this and it's applicable for every other single microcontroller from different uh, vendors. SPI, I2C, Serial, or UART. Remember the RXTX thing? That's Serial. Anything else? USB, but we don't use USB too often, so we convert USB to Serial all the time. You are not going to interface with USB protocol yourself. It's complicated. Whenever you have any communication port, which is super convenient to use and easy to, you just plug in and start working, something like that, which means the design behind it will be super complicated. USB sounds like simple, it's plugging, it's start working, but the digital design behind it complicated. Okay, somebody probably will spend two years in a company just to develop the USB digital circuit in a ASIC, in a digital chip for the company. So it's not easy. So USB, we, we are not going to interface with sensors and microcontroller using USB, uh, but we are going to use a USB to serial converter chip to convert all the USB signals to serial. So actually finally it's going to be RX and TX. So it's still serial. Anything else? There might be some specific uh, protocols similar to I2C, but they are not I2C um, from different types of sensors, which is fine. You do not need to use the hardware I2C on the board to make that communication. You can directly use the libraries available online, somebody already developed all these libraries and make it work pretty sim pretty easily. So here are these, let's take a look. So SCK is the SPI communications clock. I my asshole is master in, slave out. MOSI is master out, slave in. SS, I forgot what that's about. It's, a, it's an enable line. So if you put up to, to uh, VCC, it enables the SPI communication. Start, so the clock start comes into the sensor of the chip to activate all these uh, events. So that's SPI, okay? SCK. MISO, MOSI, SS, four lines, SPI. Keep in mind, everywhere. If you're using ST32 by controller, or MSP430, or ESP, whatever. If it has SPI, it's gonna be these four lines. Give you two seconds, okay, I'm gonna give you a quiz. What are these four lines for SPI? Five, four, Three, two, one. What are they? Do not look at your monitor. What are they? What's the clock? What's the name of the clock? ICK. What's the uh, data line? Two data lines. No, that's I2C. So what, what's the data line? What are the two data lines? Master out, slave in. S master in, slave out. That's it. So master is the mic controller is gonna send commands to the sensor if the sensor is a slave, which is name it as a master and slave. So the slave will passively receive the commands from the mic controller and send back the data collected by the sensor to the mic controller. Okay. So again, do not look at monitor. What are the four lines for SPI? What's the name of the clock? S C, K. C, K means clock. S, probably SPI. 
the first letter. <laughs> so ISPI, the clock is SDK. <clears throat> and uh, data lines, MOSI, MISO. Chip selection, what's chip selection? SS, so four lines for SPI, okay? Is that clear? <clears throat> 3 .3 volts. Do we have a 3.3 .3 volts regulator on the board? Do we have a 3.3 .3 volts regulator on this board? Where? Is that 5 volts or 3.3 volts? That's a 5 volts regulator. So do we have a 3.3 volt regulator? No. So where that comes from? Where does that come from? So I'm repeating. <clears throat> I mentioned this in the first class. And of course, I'm not expecting to remember that. I just mentioned that once. So uh, I'm a person, I'm a queen of repeating myself, right? As you know, so I'm gonna repeat for many times on, until you can remember every important things for all these projects. So the circuit servos comes from the microcontroller internally. So there is a little um, voltage regulator inside, can stabilize the 5 volts into circuit servos. Uh, however, it is not able to handle high current. I think the limit is somewhere around 40 milliamps, 40, 40 milliamps. So which means if you want to power up your wireless module, which normally consume a lot of current, Using this 3.3 volts power supply, it's gonna burn your microcontroller because it is not able to handle that current. It's gonna make it super hot and, and, and reduce the lifespan of your 328 chip. So the 3.3 volts is just used for some really fundamental uh, sensors, which need a 3.3 volts, but it's not for any wireless modules. Do not use it for wireless modules. Like the one we are going to use in this tutorial, it consumes like up to 300 milliamps. It will make your 328 chip super hot if you use this 3.3 volts. So you do have a 3.3 volts regulator inside the chip, but however, do not use it for high current applications. A0 to A7, what are they? <laughs> analog pins, can, can do analog input, analog output, either way. So analog input, so you can, uh, it has an ADC inside, being connected to the pins inside the chip. They are analog to digital converters and convert, um, you know, up to eight channels of analog inputs. And they do have multiple functions. So this column is one of the functions. And if you enable the other function, you can use it for other purpose. So what is this? So that's I2C. So I2C only needs two lines. So I prefer I2C, you know, to SPI. If I can use I2C, I'll use I2C. If I have to, I have to use SPI, I'm gonna use S SPI. <laughs> um, but definitely I2C is better because on only two lines, it saves space on the PCB, and you don't need that many wires to connect to the sensors and everything, uh, make your board looks nicer. So SDA, DA means data, CL means clock. Five, four, three, two, one. So what are the two lines of I2C? SDA and what? I'll pick up someone to answer this question, right? Do not look at the monitors. Then, what are the two lines for I2C? Yeah. Okay, some help from Humberto. What is SDA? What's, what's SCL? Okay. Jesse? Okay, one more question. What about SPI? What's the name of the pin for SPI's clock? 
Okay, great. Yes, do not get confused. If you see SDK, it's a clock. It's for SPI. ICL is also clock, but for I2C. Okay. How many lines for SPI communication? Pardon? How many wires for SPI communication? How many lines? In order to have SPI communication, how many lines? Is that four or two? SPI. Four, right? What's the name of the clock? What's the name of, yeah, SDK. What's the name of the two data lines? Master out, slave in, master in, slave out. MOSI, MSO. Okay? And there's an enable pin which is called SS. SS is the, is the enable line. You pull it down to ground, you disable everything. You pull it up to APCC, you enable the SPI communication. All right, ready for a quiz next week? <laughs> These are, this can be really good interview questions. If, if you put something like microcontrollers, embedded devices, sensors on your, on your resume, and they ask you SPI, I, I2C, these kind of questions, and you know nothing about it, that's not good, okay? Very basic stuff you need to know. Keep moving forward. Five volts come from where? The regulator. Recite, ground, be in. Okay. The digital pins they can be used as normal digital GPIOs. Okay. But at the same time, they can be used as the SPI communication as well. And also PWM. So it's really a multifunction pin. All these digital pins you can use just normal GPIOs. So that's the external interrupt. Um, I normally do not use it, but however, you can set up a timer internally to get an interrupt routine to trigger some functions. And if you are not familiar with interrupt, um, I can cover that a little bit for, for you. But however, I think uh, the other ones are were in my CE315 you know where the tutorial is, right? It's in my 315 class. Let's go back. It's not really hard. Um, go to 315 teaching, okay? And go to 315. Oh, I think I have it here for group one. Yeah, just go to group one. And I think interrupt is in this tutorial, LC, LCD and sensors and actuators. Let me see if it's there. Scroll down to here. Interrupts. So that, that covers the details. But however, I will explain to you uh, what this what does this mean? Again, not just for you, but also for the students came from 315. I'm pretty sure you probably already forgot everything. Uh, the function of the external interrupt is the interrupt that we used is a timer. So whenever the timer is up, it triggers the interrupt and do something else instead of the loop. Okay, that's the purpose. So if you have an external interrupt, you can imagine what's the function of it, right? Whenever this pin is triggered, I will stop the loop and do something else. Is that useful? Think about it, what kind of application you can think of, think of right now? I don't have any application in my mind right now, but probably you are creative, let me know. So I'm running a microcontroller, it's a loop, right? It's gonna run the loop forever, do something to the loop. And I need another function I have uploaded to the microcontroller. It won't run that little piece of function 
unless I receive or the my controller receives a signal from the external interrupt pin. So there's no timer to control this interrupt, to trigger this interrupt. It's an external pulse. What's the function of that? Emergency shutdown, yeah. Or like a robot, right? So when the robot sees this kind of, sees this signal, receives this signal, to stop doing the loop, but do something else. Okay? So it's not depends on the timer because you cannot predict when this will happen. It has to be triggered by the external signal. And RHTX, so they are serial plus they are the pins connect to the USB to serial converter on the back of the board, connect to the USB port to upload the, the code to your my controller. So that's everything for the pins for this simple uh, my controller. And um, I will probably let you solder your Arduino Nano next week on one uh, are here on Wednesday. No. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. So probably let's do it individually because I didn't solder this one to the pins. I was trying to solder this for you. It took me a couple of minutes to solder one and I gave, so you need a two of these things for each of you and two, two times 11 is going to be 22. So 22 times five minutes, you can imagine. So I was not able to finish this. I think it's good for you guys to practice on that. So the requirement is, um, so of course you need to apply flux on the top because they're going to solder on the top. So you insert the, the connectors to here and you need to make it perpendicular to the board for both sides and make sure it's straight. Because if you are going to insert this to the breadboard, if it's not straight, you can imagine what's gonna happen. Okay, uh, there's one way to do that. Um, can be a little bit easier. So you can insert the pins to the board first. All right, so you can make sure it's perpendicular to the board. Have the other one here as well. And then place this my controller to the, to the pins here and double check if it's uh, straight, vertical, like that. And then start solder directly on the on the breadboard. Uh, but you do need to solder really quickly because the uh, heat can be conducted by the metal pins and melt your breadboard. It's this plastic because the pins will get hot if you point your solder iron to the, to the metal pin. So if you couldn't do that really quickly, you think you are not a really good, uh, not proficient in, in soldering, don't do that. I will show you how to do that. So uh, let's make appointments if you are available. Let's do that. I, I will send you an email and have one specific time point to let you guys go to the lab and solder it. You couldn't make it, which is fine. So you can make uh, some individual appointments with me. I'll help you with this kind of soldering. Let's do it next week. Okay. Um, so probably I'll do it on Monday with you. So the first experiment is Arduino Nano talk to the OLED display. This guy. This thing. <clears throat> ISO SCL SDA. So what's the communication protocol? I don't see. Okay. So five volts works, or you can use 3.3 .3 volts, either way. And the display definitely is not consuming too much power. 
you can imagine and why and how I know that. You can definitely look at the data sheet of the display module, okay? And also, I know definitely it's not going to consume a lot of power because I have something like this. The battery lasted for 10 years and the watch is only $10. I'm not an Apple fan, so I'm not buying an Apple watch. I just need a $10 watch, which works. <laughs> and won't break down for 10 years. That's what I need. Casio make good watches. They didn't sponsor my lectures anyway. <laughs> so practice this first, because they are going to finally use this module for your temperature display. So make it work first, and the code has been provided. Okay, just make it work. Uh, you need some uh, special setup for your Arduino IDE. So make sure you have that set up, and so you can download the code to, our, uh, to the Nano. If you do not change it, you won't be able to upload the code. It's gonna stay stuck there forever, like uploading, da, 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 da. forever. <laughs> Uh, make sure you follow this tutorial to make that changes like this, right? So Arduino Nano and also per processor need to be the old bootloader and change the port, okay? Make sure you'll do that. Otherwise, it's going to stuck at uploading forever. And if you send an email, say, Dr. Lee, I stuck here forever. What's going to happen? I won't reply the email. <laughs> Watch the video. Okay, you know how to make it work. And here's one thing. Uh, you probably will see some of the online examples. They use 0x3D, which is a hex address for this module. But actually it's not 3D, which is interesting. Maybe they have a newer version of the display module. So you need to use 3C. So what is 3 in hex? 0011, what is C in hex? C is 12, right? 1100, zero, zero. okay? So it's actually an 8-bit binary number. 0x, 3c. It's not 0 times 3c, right? <laughs> it's an address, okay? And you can show, if you use a, the Adafruit library, you can show all this animation on the LED. Pretty fun, but we are not going to use all this animation. So here's the code, directly use it, it's gonna work. And then make sure the temperature sensor works. So that's a new temperature sensor, you haven't used that in your 315. So that's a brand new sensor and it's in your box. So there might be several modules or several uh, parts in the same shape. <laughs> so there are two different tem uh, temperature sensors, looks the same. And there might be another transistor looks in the same shape as well. So definitely, you know, look at the print on the sensor. If you see Dallas, that's a correct sensor on the use. That's a temperature sensor. And it's really popular because directly uh, send the digital temperature, temperature signal uh, to the microcontroller. So there's no analog signal. Uh, you don't even need to calculate anything. So the digital signal directly contains the temperature information. And it's only one wire. Even though it's not I2C, but it's a one wire communication. See, it only has VDD ground and PQ. Where is the clock? I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> it's not even two wires. Like I2C has two wires. What are the two wires for I2C? Again. Yeah, ICD, ICL. How many wires this guy has? has? You know, except for VDD and ground, definitely you need a power, right? It's just one. Is that crazy? Just one. How that works? It contains both clock and, and data. So uh, there's a library you can directly use. You don't need to know what's uh, details about timing telegram. So the uh, name of the library is called OneWire. I think it came from this company, so make it easy to use. Uh, directly use it, it's gonna work, no worries. Uh, you can buy a surface mount 
version online to make it even smaller and just one wire. So we'll connect it to the nano and read temperatures in the serial monitor first so you know it works and then display to the OLED. So this is trying to tell you what's the uh, embedded system develop development uh, procedure is, right? So you start from a very fundamental function of the entire system. You know you have many blocks in the entire system, but I'm not going to build everything up at once and try to make it work. 88% time you will fail, or 99%, okay? You'll start from the very fundamental blocks, taking baby steps. So I know I'm gonna use the display, so I will make the display work first and then the temperature sensor, and then combine the temperatures and the display, and make sure that works. Okay, so that works. I do not have time to make this one to the top, which is make it like superscript. So it's a subscript right now. Uh, I don't recommend you to spend time on that one, but if you like, you can do it. Uh, you have to probably get into the, the driver uh, running on the back end for this for this thing. We are directly using the Adafruit library for the display. I think it's fine for now. If you want to fix it, just do it. Otherwise, save time to get everything done first and then come back to here to figure out this minor, minor issue. So this is uh, 25.63 uh, Celsius degree. So the sensor, my controller, display works. Next. interrupt because I need to introduce this ESP8266 which is a Wi-Fi module it's a Wi-Fi transmitter so I have one my controller sends the temperature data to the display and at the same time send it to the router and display on third-party server which is SyncSpeak so somebody else can see the temperature on if they go to open the browser okay so make this work, definitely you can. Here's a diagram, what kind of connections into, uh, which is required by this system. We'll cover this next week, so you are not ready yet. Um, so that's fine if you are not going to solder this uh, this weekend. So you don't have any homework assignments for if you have done for the PCB. And I think, yeah, on Monday I will take probably 50% of the time to cover the rest of the tutorial for you. See, finally, you have two mic controllers and one display, one temperature sensor, one Wi-Fi module. And the, the slave mic controller will send the data to the browser, uh, the router or website using this Wi-Fi module. So you'll see temperature displayed on the website. Uh, so it's a IoT project. Internet of Things. They so can use this one as part of the smart home project, something like that. And after you are done here, the next step is to add some push buttons so you can change the Wi Fi credentials by the user. And after that, <laughs> what's, what's the final step? After everything has been passed on the driveboard. PCB, got a decent layout. I will fabricate it for you. You didn't even pay uh, special fees for this course, did you? You didn't, because I didn't propose it last year. The reason I didn't propose, because I was super busy. The department asked me to propose it, I didn't. So you guys are taking advantages from the department right now, and I, <laughs> which I'm, I, I'm happy for you guys, because you'll save money. Otherwise, it's going to be $100 per person for this course because you can see I, I'm going to fabricate two boards for you plus all these materials and parts you need to solder onto the boards. Um, plus, some of the boards probably I will lose. <laughs> so make sure give it back to me since you didn't pay for that, okay? All right. Do you like it? <laughs>